this is Jan from the Fuzzy Duckling, back with part two of painting your whimsical rainbow trout. Now, in part one, we learned how to draw and ink our trout all ready to paint. We put down his scales with color, a white colored pencil. Now this is something different, but we did this. You can't hardly see it, but it's there. So you'll want to check out part one. Then we've taped it down with painter's tape. Next step is to paint this cute little guy. You will need your paints. You'll need your swatch card, so you can tell what color your paints are. Water. Now, be sure you have a container for clean water and a container for dirty water. Now, my container has two spots in it, so I just have to use one little dish here because it has two spots, but you'll probably need to get two containers, two glasses, two jars, two bowls, just so you have clean and dirty. Now, with your paints, before you get started, come in like with a spray bottle or a dropper and wet them down and especially wet down the ones you know you're going to use now there's some you won't use so you probably won't need to wet down everything I'm trying to think yes I need pink got pink all right and if I forget I can come in and grab it later and let that set a minute get your brush out get it wet and ready to go have a paper towel or a tissue or just a regular towel. Now I'm going to prop my little guy here where I can see him. Now in watercolors, one of the hardest things about watercolors is keeping colors from blending into the color you don't want it to blend into because watercolor has a life of its own and color will go wherever the water goes. There's a secret though. You have to control where the water goes, which sometimes is easier said than done. And also, if you have two colors that are going to be close together, and if you notice with this guy, we have a bright yellow background. And I like the yellow because it showed the fishy off. We'll just say he's in water where the sun is shining down, and he's just so warm and happy. It's probably in the tropics. <laughs> I guess a trout, maybe not. But we have bright yellow meeting dark blue and green and pink. Well, yellow is actually our lightest color. So we need to lay that down first. So we're going to wet the area for the yellow and do your best not to let any water get onto these areas. Because when you put your yellow here, if you have water here, that yellow is just going to follow on down wherever you put water. It doesn't care where your lines are. It just cares where water is. So remember that if you have contrasty places and you don't want these two colors to blend in together, do the lighter one first. So that's what we're going to do first is the background. Now to me that's, that's the opposite of what I tend to want to do. I want to do my object first and do the background later. And sometimes that's good. If my fishy was a light yellow and I put him in a dark blue background, I'd need to do the fishy first. Do the lightest color first. Now, I have done this fishy several times already. I've got several pictures of him. And I've done it the other way when I did my yellow after the fish and if you're very careful it'll work but it's a lot harder to keep the two colors from mixing unless you do your light color first so you need to decide which yellow you like the best have that already wet now we're going to come in here and we're going to do this a section at a time I'm just going to start up in this corner now, if you also notice, I don't fill in. I like to have that those white edges there. Now, that's up to you. If you want color all the way to the edge of your paper, then water needs to go all the way to your edge of your paper. Now, with my lighting, it is really 
kind of hard for me to see where I've gotten it wet. But I'm avoiding getting too close to these lines that I don't want it to go over. And then we'll kind of just pull our color in later. So once you have water on there, and I suppose you probably can't, no, you can't see my paint. I don't think that's going to work. Well, you'll just have to trust. I'm dipping in my yellow paint. <laughs> and I'm just going to add paint along in kind of like drops. I actually kind of think it would be neat to just let it dry that way. But that's not how we did this. So we'll go ahead and fill it in this time. And I like to get the majority of this all painted where I want the paint. Get fairly close to my lines, but not all the way there yet. There we go. And then I'm just going to start bringing the paint in as close as I can up to the line. But I don't want to cross the line. Now, we're human we are going to make a misstep or a joggle. Something's going to come up and bump us and we'll do this. All you can do at that point is try to remove the color. And when this happens, because I'm sure it'll happen to me, you'll see me doing it. But try your best not to bump into and put water beyond that line. Because then you'll have to fix it. And the less we have to fix, the better. If you have a pet, like a cat, that likes to jump up on your table, <laughs> which I do, and when I paint, he can't come into my room. Or a puppy that likes to jump up on you, and it's hard to refuse petting them, but inevitably... It'll shake you or the table, and then you'll have something you've got to fix on your painting. Look at that. There we go. We have our right quarter of my painting done there. So now I'm just going to move on. I'm going to add a little water into this section. See, I had yellow on my brush, but since this is going to be yellow, it was okay just to add, add that in. Now I need to add a little pigment from my paint into here. smooth that out and smooth that up into where we ended our first batch of yellow. Now I'm still not touching my lines. There we go. Now I'm going to come in and very carefully bring that paint up to my edges. This can take some patience and some time. So take your time. So one of the things we need to learn when we're doing our art is take the time we need to do it well. I've said before, and it's true, when I'm on video, I tend to hurry because I see that time just passing by. And I tell you, time does pass by when you're doing art. You can be working along and think you've worked 15 minutes and looked up and you've worked an hour. Here we go. Let's keep adding. So we're just going to move on to this section. I'm just adding water to my brush here. We'll get all this wetted down. I'm not sure if that's the correct word, wetted. We'll get it all wet. How's <laughs> that? Now I need to get pigment from my paint. We'll dab that in. See how easy this is? I definitely want some white showing down in that corner, so I'm going to be careful and try to leave that there. Up fairly close to my lines, but not all the way. And now I'm going to come in here and carefully bring it up.
one more corner here all right into our water let's get it wet add some paint meet where we quit before come around meet down here now let's bring it into our lines think we're done with our background it didn't take long did it got any places you want to touch up while it's damp now's the time to do it but I think that's pretty good now we need to clean the yellow so clean in your dirty water container wipe your brush down now we're going to start on the fish and we were talking about doing the lighter color before the darker color so we're going to do the pink next now, if all you have is red, that's fine. Just dilute it a lot with your water and it'll come out pink. And that's the great thing about watercolors. So I'm just going to do kind of a wet line down the middle. Again, I'm staying away from the edges. I'm going to dip into my pink. Do the center here. And my pink is almost red. It's just that if we do it light enough, we come up with a pink. And now I'm going to move this as easily as I can up to the line. Sometimes this takes some patience. And I've got this pretty wet, which can make it harder to not go over my edges. Now you'll find there's some spots where this paint is just not wanting to go. And you know where that is? That's where you have your colored pencils lines. And that's what you want it to do. You want the paint to, to move away from those lines. And as it dries, it will tend to move away from it more and more. But sometimes you'll find that it doesn't want to paint it over them now. And that's good. That's fine. You want those to stay light colored. Now, I finally did it. I went over my line so what I need to do clean my brush see how much of that I can pick up before it dries there see it got almost all of it and that's what you need to do when you make a mistake is try to remove that color now what I will have to do is be very careful now that I don't color in this before this spot dries because it, the color you put here will want to bleed up into the pink and then you're going to have an ugly color. I found out this pink I'm using with the color I'm using on my fishy. When they blend, they look awful. <laughs> See, now it's getting worse and worse. Sometimes I feel like I just make it worse. But pick up pigment, wipe it down on your cloth. And the lucky thing is, though, even if you have a little pink left here when you cover it with the darker color it's not going to look too bad and I cannot do a picture without doing this <laughs> the reason that happened there I was painting a little bit too wet and it just kind of wanted to move over here so you're seeing the frustration of not being careful enough all right, I'm going to call that good now. Now, we need to move over to the lips. We don't want to color this part yet because of this being wet. So let's move to the lips. And I do see even my yellow is a little wet. So it's a good idea. It would be a good, very good idea if you just walked away from this for about 10 to 15 minutes at this point. 
and let it dry. Now on the video, <laughs> I don't have 10 to 15 minutes on my video just to walk away. I can use my heat gun to dry this or I can just add a little air. So let me dry this a little bit and then we'll be right back with you. Okay, lips. We're just going to do a wet glob down the center of each of these lips. And you know what? Let's try not to do what I did on that little spot, which is get too much water there. And that's what I did there. I had too much water. And it just bled out. Get you a little of your pink. Add your color in there. Now, I did forget that I like to leave the middle of that circle white. It gives it a highlight, but we can get that white more ways than one. Let's paint in. Let's go ahead and use some of our extra paint and water from down here, and we'll move it right up here. We'll take advantage of that. Now... I want this to be a little darker, a shadow color, so I'm going to dip into a little bit of red just around this outer edge on the top and the bottom. Kind of blend that in there. And as I said, usually I leave a white spot there that I haven't painted and I forgot to do that this time. So how do we get it light again? Well, clean your brush off, get some water, dampen that up, and just like we removed that mistake, we can lighten it up. See how that lightened it up? And just keep doing that until it's where you want it. Now, it doesn't remove it all together, which is what I wanted to do there, but it does lighten it up. There we go. We have the highlights in our lips. And we went over just a little bit there again. So I say, I can't paint without going over my lines. Maybe you can. Now, what's our next color? I would say it's our eye color. So, I used orange. You use any color you want. Now, since my orange is still going to be a lighter color than my fishy's body, I'm going to do it next. And I'm just going to come in. I'm not going to wet this down first because this is a very little spot. I'm just going to go into my wet paint. And that was not the orange. Which one is my orange? Is this where you need this? This is the orange I want. And there. There's my orange. It looks so red in my pan that it's hard for me to find my orange without my swatch sheet. And now this is just paint on my dry paper because it's a very small spot and I really need to control where that water is. And if I put water on there first, it's going to go places I don't want it to go. I could have done this that way, and that might have been the smarter thing to do, is just to paint on dry paper for that. All right, shall we next, I think we should do, it's finding time to do this body. Now, if you notice here, and trout have light tummy colors, so I'm trying to not bring the color all the way down here and just blend it into white, which can be a challenge. It may work or it may not work. And I'm using kind of a turquoisey green. Now you look at what colors you have and you'll just have to decide. You could use a gray or a blue, a dark green, go purple even. But you'll have to look at what colors you have. And I'm using my turquoisey green. So now I'm going to come here. I'm going to get water. And I'm going to wet down the center of this part of my fishy. Just kind of like we did there. I'm going to go into my turquoise green and drop it in. And try not to get too much liquid here that may go places I don't want it to. Kind of smooth it out. 
and bring it to our lines. Now, if you feel like you've got too much water and you're getting puddly, touch it with your brush and then brush it off on your paper. That does help you keep from getting colors where you don't want it to. It's just that sometimes if you're like me, I get lazy and I don't do the things I should do. And at this point, you should start seeing your scale lines popping up through the paint. And they'll get stronger as they dry. So don't fight them. Don't fight to color them in. Just let them do their thing. You can also use a sharp white crayon will work for that. And you may be more likely to have that in the house. It's just the crayons tend to sometimes make fatter lines. And if you're doing something like birch trees or something that you want to stay white, a crayon will work for you if you don't want to put any color on it. Okay. Now we'll find out if my pink is dry. My pink isn't very dry yet, so I'm going to have to be very careful. Again, I say for you, it would really be best sometimes to walk away from it and be sure it's dry before you keep going. But most of us get so impatient to see what it's gonna look like that we rush our pictures. And with watercolor, that drying time can be very important. So I'm going to try to be careful. But I may make more mistakes than so watch me fix them. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Now let's go ahead. Do you see a mistake? My finger or my cleaning cloth got up here. So I'm going to try to get rid of this. I'm going to get it wet, and I'm going to try. There, we got most of it. Clean my brush again. Get that wet again. I'm going to dab it up. My, there we go. We fixed that one. For me, sometimes I feel like mainly what I do is fix mistakes. But you know what? <laughs> You're probably going to feel that way, too. As you get more practiced in watercolor, it'll get easier. And I think I told you in one of our first watercolor videos... I haven't watercolored in years and I'm trying to get back into it and so I am not a pro at watercolor by any means. I'm a beginner too because it's been very many years since I did this. I have done more colored pencils and uh, marker work than anything lately and I'm enjoying getting back into the watercolors but I am not great at it by any means. So we're all just kind of learning. If you're painting with me, we're just learning together. And I'm finding it's just a matter mainly of doing it and trying different things and just not be scared of it. Just get in there, get that brush and get that paint and start throwing it on something. Now, I had a little pink up there, and I'm trying to just blend that in kind of as a shadow color. That pink came from one of my mistakes. But if you look at professional watercolors even, you'll find that these things happen to everybody. We're all human, and that's part of the uh, charm of watercolors. It doesn't look perfect most of the time. All right. Some clean water to 
bring this to the edge since it was drying on me. Now all we have to do is do the tummy. So let's get this area wet. And we're going to have a little fun right there, aren't we? <laughs> now remember, we want to keep this light if we can. If we don't, it's not a tragedy. This is a whimsical fish. He can look any way we want him to look. So I'm kind of wet there. I'm going to dry that because I am trying to control it going down that way into the bottom. Bring it up to the gill here. And I want the color to start ending about here, so we're just going to kind of brush it down. And I still got more color there than I'm wanting, so we'll just wipe it off and then see what we can do with this spot. Yeah, we're going to have a dark spot there that I am not going to like at all. But now you see what happens when we let too much water go on our spots. See what an ugly color that makes that? It amazes me that those two pretty colors, when they get together, that I'm trying to clean it up just a little bit. But good lesson for you sometimes to see my mistakes. Now I'm going to bring back in some green here. And see if we can cover that up a little bit. Not good, but you know what? Good lesson. Now I'm going to try while this is just a little bit wet to blend this in a little more with white. okay if it's just barely colored even just lightly colored well there's the body of our fish next thing we need to do is paint our fins now the fins all touch this body if you don't want this to be constantly ha happening it's time now to let your picture dry and I'd say walk away for 15-20 minutes maybe even a half an hour or get your hair dryer or your heat gun or fan and dry so I'm going to let mine dry and I will be back in a few minutes okay I'm back after letting this dry for a few minutes I'll be honest I tried to come in here and fix my crazy mistake up here and I haven't done a good job of it but you know my policy is to keep finishing a picture even if there's things you don't like on it because every time you finish a picture you learn something and sometimes by the time you get it finished you don't hate it as much as you thought you did so right now we're going to work on oh my goodness I see I didn't do the um the gill part and I think I want that pink too now so I'm just going to go get my pink without making this wet first I learned my lesson here on these little spots it's better just to go in and get your paint and don't put water here first oh dear Let's see if we can do this see I went over a little bit there we're not going to worry too much about it there we go Dry my brush off and see if I can just push that back in. There we go. Now let's do our fins and our tail. And I'm going to put blue down first. So I'm going to come in here and I am going to add just a little bit of water. Since this is a good sized little spot, I think we can manage it. Come in here with blue. And do what we were doing on the other areas, filling it in. 
Now, to me, this is a little wet and it may get me in trouble, so I'm going to get rid of some of this water. Okay, now I'm going to bring it on up to my lines. These little pointy lines, it's hard to do them and not go over. <laughs> but we'll do the best we can, right? Yeah. Now, we want to add a little bit of shadowing in here on the fin close to the body. As you can see here, this is darker and it kind of comes up. And I used a very dark purple for that. And clean my brush, go in and get my purple paint, and just dab some along through here. We don't want a lot. And then I'm going to just Pull it up along those lines in your fin. And then bring it down to the body. And that provides some shadow look here. And then with a little of this extra that we probably have here, and if you don't have extra, get you a little more paint. Just darken these tips up a little bit. And as you see, I'm going over a little bit every time I do that. I did pretty good till then. There we go. But that's all right. We'll see if I can pick that up. And if I can't, I can't. Now, we're going to do all of these fins the very same way, including the tail. So, just to save you time and your watching, I am going to do these and I'll come back when I have these almost done. Well, I see my camera wasn't recording, but we finished all of these fins just the same way as I did that one. And we did our bubbles. Now there was a little trick to the bubble. So I'm going to show you how to do the bubble on another piece of paper. Since I have all three of them down there. Let me draw a bubble out here. It's just a circle. You know, sometimes we either haven't punched the right button on our recording equipment. Or it just decides it doesn't want to work. And who knows which one it is half the time. Alright, here's my circle. I'm doing these bubbles in blue. Now I'm not getting it wet beforehand. I'm going in and dipping some blue paint. And I have way more than I want, so I'm going to wipe that off. And we're just going to put color around the left side because we want to leave a shiny highlight. Okay, that's about halfway covered. And then just a little bit here to the right, but not very much. We're going to leave a blank white spot there. See how that is? Now, we want that to dry a little bit. And then very lightly, we're just going to pull a little bit of light, light blue, not much there, into the center to give it that highlight. And if we got more than we wanted, we just pull our trick with a little bit of a wet brush and, and pull it out. And there's our bubble. And that's how I did these bubbles. So now we need to let it all dry well before we pull this paint tape off. And then I'll show you how to make your edging, if you want it, and putting your sequins on. So we'll be back in just a few minutes after this is dried. Okay, I am back. I uh, have gone ahead and emptied my water out so I don't do something silly and spill it while I'm doing this work. 
Now, this is optional, but I want the spots there that the rainbow trout have. And I am going to use sequins. Sequins are very inexpensive, but a lot of fun to use. I'm just going to use some plain silver sequins. Now when you look closely at a sequin, you'll see that they have a side that kind of bulges up and a side that bulges down. I want the part that bulges up to be the one that shows. And I don't know about yours, but mine seem to come with several stuck together sometimes, so you need to watch for that pretty carefully and pull them apart if you can. And it doesn't matter how many you put or where. You just arrange them in the way you would like to have them. I want a few down here. These can be a little frustrating to work with sometimes. Such tiny little things that have a mind of their own. And they're hard to get a hold of. But with some patience, you can manage that. All right. We've got them picked out. Now we need to glue them. I like to use Aileen's Tacky Glue. But any kind of glue you have that you like. It should work just fine. I would say probably not a glue stick because it's hard to get it up into this bowl shape of your sequin. Now I'm going to move these down a little ways and put my glue down where these go. Now try to be careful. Now see that was way more than I wanted but glue has a mind of its own too. It was really coming out of here. Try to keep your glue from getting on your painted areas where your sequins aren't. But invariably, like everything else in this kind of picture, you'll get some you, where you don't want it. Now, here's a hint, though. Don't go rubbing on it. Where it's somewhere you don't want it, leave it alone. This glue will dry clear. And if you rub on it, it's going to disturb the paint and pick it up just like water would. And you'll have a spot you can't fix. So if, I don't know if you can see it there where I got some glue I didn't want in that spot. I just leave it alone. So remember glue dries clear. At least this glue does. Be sure you use the glue that does dry clear. Okay, that's part of them. Get these on. See if I can do my drops of glue a little better. If you could get glue that had a tiny little end on it where the glue comes out in smaller dots, that would be very handy. But I don't have something like that around right now. There we go. That's, that's a little better. And, just, and you might find that you can use tweezers for this. I find I'm no better using the tweezers than I am... <laughs> Like this, and I'm very clumsy with them this way. But eventually, we get there. Once you get that sequin dropped into that spot, just don't fiddle with it. Because as sure as you do, you'll drag some glue where you don't want it. And mess up some of your paint. Now, the only thing left to do... We need to take this painter's tape off and do this gently. Because if you pull too quickly, you may pull a layer of your watercolor paper off. And uh, that won't make you very happy because it sure doesn't make me happy when I do that. If I get in a hurry. Getting in a hurry, I think, is your worst enemy to doing good watercolors. Actually, it's probably our worst enemy for about anything is we get in a hurry and... Then we make mistakes and things happen. And if we go slower, usually it turns out better. And even though this is painter's tape and it's not supposed to stick too hard to your paper and stuff, it does sometimes. And I have had it pull a layer of my paper up. So I know it can happen. And if you're using masking tape, it can even do that more so. And look what I did there. I think that was a fingerprint. 
You know what? I'm not sure what that was. This just goes to show you anything can happen to your picture at any point, doesn't it? <laughs> I must have had a drop of paint on my tape and it flipped up on that. Yeah, it's there. All right. Now you can either leave it like this with the white edges and it looks just fine that way or of course you could frame it but I am going to do some edging with washi tape now I really like this black and white edging but to show another type we could use I found this yesterday and saw this color this turquoisey color on here and thought oh perfect for a frame so I've never used this so let's put it on my picture and see what it looks like Okay, get it started here. So just have your picture on something where the ends of the tape, it won't hurt if it sticks to it. Now, a well-finished dining room table or something, or a desk, you would want to be very careful with this part, but you probably aren't painting on that anyway. I want to have a decent size. There we go. Frame. And I like to just go ahead and let it stick down there while I'm working on it. Come along and put one across the top. Oops. See, now there we go. I go off dropping things. you have real thin tape you don't have to do this over the edge just put it all on your frame but this is a little thicker than what I wanted on it okay now I need to gently pull all this up turn it over I can pull this tape up There we go. Oh, I like that color around my fishy. That really set my fishy off. So we had the black and white, which I really like. And even though I went crooked here, which I did. And washi tape will come back up fairly easy so I could straighten that back up. But I'm not going to take the time right now to do that. So there you go. I hope you have enjoyed this project. And I would suggest that you just go along with this on all of these watercolors if you want to learn more about watercolor because every time I try to show you a little bit of a new technique like using your colored pencil here to make these white lines that pop up or how we did our bubbles. I know now this is using inexpensive materials and you can do so much more with the more expensive ones. And if you love this, I'd suggest you watch some more watercolor tutorials with the professionals. The only thing I say is they always start out with very difficult pictures, it seems like, so don't let it discourage you. You can do it. Well, I'm going to go for now, and in a few days we'll have a new project that has to do with fishies. So I hope you come back and join us with making that. So bye-bye for now.